Welcome back, everybody. All right, now we can go ahead and start talking more about the actual standard that Ethernet uses and the uh, access method that Ethernet uses. Uh, let's get the little handy dandy pencil back. Let's put the thickness a little bit. That was kind of, I didn't, didn't like the fact that was kind of, wasn't that thick. All right, so Ethernet, the standard that the IEEE actually came up with was 802.3. The access method is C S M A C D. And again, you know that this whole time I've had an injury and it's really hurting me. So that's why I'm holding my hand. Okay. Uh, just so you know. <clears throat> 802.3. It's the access method. Now we have variations of 802.3 because went from 10 megabits per second to 100 megabits per second to 1,000 megabits per second, and then we get into fiber optics. So is the faster you go, obviously this will be, you know, if you have TX, CX, OX, all these different uh, cabling standards that they have. But 802.3 is the Ethernet standard. If ever asked what IEEE standard you use, is 802.3. Doubtful will ask you that on the CCNA, but you need to understand CSMA, CD. Carrier, sense, Multiple access collision detection. And basically all that does, you remember the, what I just drew, the bus topology or the, or the star, whatever it is, hybrid star, extended star, all these things that these drawings have. In today's technology, if you have a switch and you're running 100 megabits per second, that is ethernet, you're gonna run into this situation, which means first come, first serve. The first one that gets to the wire is the one that's able to transmit. If you hear noise on your wire, no information is gonna be sent out out on it. So if it's clear, then it will send. But there will be times where your your network is so bogged down that there's so many people transmitting that you may have collisions. And when you do have collisions, what happens is the standard, right, shoots out a jamming signal. Everybody gets, you know, nobody is allowed to actually send information. Back off algorithm is starts ticking, pretend like there's a clock going there. Once that timer is over, then people can try and transmit again. Again, this is something that's really transparent to the user. The user sees, man, the network is slow. Man, it's taking forever to print. My God, what's wrong with this internet? That's all we hear in IT uh, because they don't know, and that's, that's perfectly okay. So it's our, it's why it's our job as Cisco professionals, networking professionals, that we need to break up collision domains. This is the reason. This is the reason that we need to break up collision domains, broadcast domains. If we can break up broadcast domains of layer two, logically using VLANs, segmentation is extremely important because of the type of access method uh, that we have, which is Ethernet. Because of this, because everybody's trying to transmit at the same time. And if you have everybody under the same VLAN, because by default, we have one VLAN, right? VLAN one on all the switches. So we need to segment. And this is the reason right here. That's why we don't use hubs. Hubs are things of the past, multi-port repeaters, right? We don't use those anymore. We use switches. And the faster you go, the better it is. So if you have the opportunity, instead of doing 100 megabits per second, you're doing 1,000 megabits per second, go ahead and do so if it's feasible for the company. And it should be feasible because you want productivity in your company. All right? But that's how this access method is. It's first come, first serve, all right? Now, this was put in place in case, so hey, if more than one person, right, it's on the wire, then it sends out that jamming signal. People gotta wait for a period of time when, before they can transmit again. But you don't want that to happen on a constant basis. And how do you prevent that? This is where we talked about previously with the OSI and all these models, when you're building a network from the ground up, all right, you keep the standards in mind because, hey, okay, this is a surveying company. We're using AutoCAD. We're doing all sorts of drawings or you know, heavy computations or big packets are going across constantly. The network and even wide area networks are a whole another story. But if we're doing within the local land, definitely you know, your boss wants to see your drawings or you need to have a shared folder or whatever the case may be. You want things to be quick because you know, you know if you're in IT or going into IT and you work help desk and I've worked help desk that those trouble tickets don't stop. Don't stop and the biggest complaint is 
my network is slow, my network is slow, my network is slow. Why is your network slow? How did you build it from the ground up? Did you segment properly? Did you take in consideration the standard that Ethernet is running? So people, when they are sending information, if they're big packets, it's like, hey, you're running 10 megabits per second, what are you doing? Or you're running 100 megabits per second, but everybody, you have you know, 200 people underneath one, uh, one segment. You don't want to do it. They're all trying to go online, print, access share folders constantly, and these are big files. So these are things to take in consideration and understanding what this, how Ethernet works and is based on that access method type. I mentioned token ring. See, token ring never had their problem because they had, whoa, whoa. It had that free flowing token that would go around either counterclockwise or clockwise, depending if you're using the IBM original standard or the IEEE 802.5. Whoever had that token was the one that can talk, that can transmit information. Once that token was uh, obtained by the destination and it was released back onto the network, then the next person that gets it can talk. It was all on an orderly basis, but it was very slow, 60 megabits per second. Reliable, but slow. So that's why Token Ring didn't make it too, it made it far enough, uh, but it really, not say died off, but it's not as popular as Ethernet. Ethernet is the king, and that's the way where all networks are being turned to is the Ethernet network. So the way we compensate for that access method is having big pipes, having those 1,000 megabits per second, having across what area networks, 10 gigabits or 100 gigabits, whatever it is, if you're sending information across, having um, um, the connection types would be least connection types using PPP, things like that, so where you have that full bandwidth all the time. But again, you need to justify that. You need to analyze. And I don't want to get into the design part, which I usually find myself going, but it's so important. Because even though we don't like to talk about the OSI and standards and all that, they're there for a reason, for us to understand and say, hey, we're creating an Ethernet network from the ground up. This company is XYZ. XYZ company sends big packets within their LAN and across their WAN. So we need to make sure that there is no delay. We need to, they're a big company, we need to segment them properly, we need to create VLANs not only for bandwidth but for security purposes. And you tweak things and you go along and you do these things and you create the gigabit uh, uh, ethernet in the LAN and you create you know 10 gig you know metro ethernet whatever it is that you want across the wide area network but again you have to justify it but that's the way we get around the 802.3 uh, contention based uh, access method where is the first come first serve so if you have bit enough bandwidth that it's not gonna matter. It's not gonna matter. Then okay. But if you're struggling in your land because you're running 100 megabits per second, and let me tell you, I've been in many, 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 many lands where you're running 100 megabits per second, and you think that's the best thing in the world, and you have everybody all of a sudden just you know imaging and going online and doing all these things, and you're in the same VLAN, your network comes to a crawl. And we're just talking about 400 users. 400 users. That's it. Now imagine a large enterprise network, a whole building, 12, 14, 20 floors, that they're all part of the same company and they all have to be inter-networked together at some point. Are you not going to separate those with VLANs? Are you not going to use gigabit? What's going to be your backbone as you go across? All these things is what you need to consider when you're creating these Ethernet networks. You need to have that bandwidth available to avoid, not avoid, but to at least, since it is a first come, first serve, that you have less and less collisions, and that is our complete goal, and have as much, uh, or as least, I should say, downtime on your network, and the least number of trouble tickets as possible, okay? Because imagine if you get calls every day, I can't print, it, or not that I can't print, uh, the printing's taking forever. It takes me, you know, 15 minutes, I'm exaggerating, 15 minutes to print one Word document. Well, that's a problem, you know. <laughs> if it's telling, you know, a small Word document is taking that long to print, something's going on, all right? So all these things you need to take in consideration when you work with Ethernet because of this access method, all right? 
All right, that's it for Ethernet. I hope you understand how Ethernet works. All right, and when you are creating your networks, keep that in mind. So when you are going to these consulting jobs, you consult the company correctly based on what they do. I'll see you in the next lesson.